Uh, we've got Kimberly uh, Douglas back, I think. Is she here? Yes. You don't, you don't see. Hi, Denise. I, I still don't see you. Oh, there you are. I was about <laughs> to, you know, I don't know, cry or something. I'm like, no, we've got to get it's Kimberly. because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, again, we're talking about jewels. We're talking about Black History Month. We're talking about the ARC. Tell folks about the ARC. So the ARC is set on 203,000 square feet. We have 14 nonprofit partners, and a part of that is the ARC Theater, which is the hub for a lot of our arts and culture partners and really everyone that's on the campus. And our venue spaces, the ARC Theater and the ARC Black Box, are open for rental to the community once we are out of this pandemic. Um, as you know, the arts and culture community has been um, working greatly just to preserve our art, preserve our voices, and to be heard, and more so Black creatives and artists and production designers have found a home at the Art Theater. And so our space is very unique to the theater landscape in that it is run by a, a minority team um, that, you know, is all under 40 years old. And we are training young people to learn about the production arts. And so our space is um, one that is breaking new ground in terms of awakening and enlightening people. So I'm so glad that you had all these educators on because in, in terms of arts and education, we are it. <laughs> we are that see it, be it, or be it moment that Amanda Gorman talked about in terms of being seen in the arts industry. So I well, hope everybody, but, once we reopen, get a chance to come and visit our space. And I know, I'm glad you mentioned our um, youth poet or uh, laureate, uh, Amanda Gordon, because uh, we all can take pieces of her wonderful poem and apply it to the work that we do or to our own lives. And I know every time I'm at the ARC, and uh, if I'm with a group and it's their first time there, their mouths drop open. They were like, how come I didn't know? Uh, and that's the idea. It's always good to know that there's a new audience that you can expose uh, the art to. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up audience because, you know, during this pandemic, finding a way to stay connected um, with the East of the River community, as well as to take this opportunity to expand our audiences and to share our messages has been so important for us to make waves and also retrain our minds into how we produce art, how we support Black artists, and just really who we want to be out in the world. And so this is a great opportunity for all of us. So yes, we are presenting Black History Month virtual programming starting on February 5th. Um, we will start with Soul Versations, <laughs> which is where the soul of Black artists um, meets, you know, humanity. And we get to see what our local artists have been enduring during this pandemic. And we see some amazing performances. We start the first week with DC Native uh, Cy Smith, who comes on to do episode one with our host, Russell Taylor. Is it okay if I just go down the lineup? I know we're short on time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, just, yeah, sure. You can share a few more with us, please. Okay. <laughs> And I'll be quick, I promise. Um, we're bringing in Howard University Gospel Choir, who we're thrilled to have. Um, both of us are HBCU alumni um, from Howard University Bison. Yay! <laughs> so a beautiful thing to be able to share, you know, the musical history of a great institution. Restoration Stage, who a Black-owned company um, under the brilliant leadership of Stephen A. Butler Jr., who is an up-and-coming playwright, and Courtney Baker Oliver. They'll release new work uh, with a stage reading live from the White Law Hotel. Tell. And then the Art Theater has launched a podcast, Young, Gifted, and Black at the Art Theater. And we're talking about Blacks and dance. And we get to feature our friends at the Dance Institute of Washington, who will launch a production called Our Spiritual Journey that um, will air on February 28th. And then lastly, DC Black Theater and Arts Festival will present Campaign 72, which is about uh, Shirley Chisholm's 1972 presidency. Wow, that sounds, <laughs> sounds sensational. And so we can see all of this by going to, is it your Facebook page? To our Facebook, um, but I would say the easiest probably is going to uh, bbardc.org backslash the art theater. We have a entire link tree set up. So literally all you have to do is click a button and it'll take you to whatever show you want to see. And wow. we will be airing live um, on those dates I mentioned, but we also have the lineup on our website. This is this is wonderful, Kimberly. And, and the part that I like most is that, you know, you have young people uh, that are working with you that are helping in the production. I mean, they, they are uh, gaining the skills that hopefully they can continue to use there at the ARC. But if they decide to go on to, I don't want to say bigger and better things, because in my mind, the ARC is bigger and better. Um, but, you know, if they want to move on to other um, 
opportunities, they are getting great training there and, and the community appreciate that. So thank you. And yes, this is um, an opportunity for our ICANN technical theater interns to experience training in media and broadcasting. You know, during this pandemic, again, great opportunities are emerging for us and they are helping us to produce a lot of the programming that you all are going to see and also producing their own original content because we want them to know that Black people can take up space as content creators as well. And just so I can say some, give you some flowers, I will say it always appreciate your support of the Arc Theater. And I will say, I saw you give a masterful interview with John Lewis um, many years ago at the Arc Theater. And I will never forget that moment because seeing you as a black woman um, in leadership, not only of the Washington Informer, but to lead that interview was inspiring, um, especially to me. So thank you for all you oh, do. Thank you, thank you. It was a great partnership between us and the Arc and Mahogany Books and yes. And of course, uh, Congressman Lewis and his staff, uh, we sorely miss. So thank you so much, Kimberly. We will uh, actually be promoting some of these programs ourselves in uh, the Washington Informer and trying to partner with you and making sure that you know the audience is there and that you all can continue to do the great work that you do. So you don't, don't feel a strand here at Win TV. We want you back anytime. Thank you so much, Denise. All right, all right, have a great one.